so this is going to be an example where i explain why we need delta time this code is just to look nice uh, don't worry about why suddenly there is match involved why there is suddenly a cause and why there is suddenly a sign here it is just to demonstrate the example i have included the match library here so in the main uh, there is simply uh, the addition of an object called line and here is the class line what i do is uh, there is a constructor for game engine obviously and i have an angle it is not actually a line it is actually a point on a circle i was going to draw a line but i didn't want to unnecessarily uh, complicate this example more there is actually one change here i'm not doing the slowdown loop anymore this loop was good for snake but for any other game uh, this loop is actually not very great we don't want any unnecessary slowdowns at all we want the code to be as fast as possible also there is another thing i want to say you might want to convert these variables to float instead in many of the examples or codes that use maths these these are not very great as an integer we don't want our calculations to be limited to integers we want the positions to be more reliable and more precise so i'm going to convert these to float so now we can see the example here i am storing the angle where the point i am going to draw it is going to be currently also if you notice something here for this example i have converted the console to terminal instead this font is actually much better for the demonstration i am doing right now so for now we are going to use terminal here i store an angle it is zero right now i store the x and y as the center of the screen this x and y is going to be the origin of the virtual circle here i calculate a point on the circle according to the angle so i'm going to store the x position of the point on the circle and i'm also going to store the y position of the point angle on the circle and here i'm calculating the slope i don't really need this but i'm going to draw that point in x and y on the circle i am using a round here instead of type casting because that will make the point more accurate the circle starts at origin so i need to add this x value here and here i am multiplying the value by the radius of the circle so that this value is on the circle so this will print a point on the circle which has a radius of 10 and the origin is at the center of the screen and here i am incrementing the angle by a little bit so the point moves on the circle so if i run this example i have this o moving in a circular path this is my virtual circle so why did i make this example imagine if i have a lot of these circles i have a lot of objects and a lot of objects are present in the game let's start with a thousand objects so the game now has a thousand of these points right let's run the code again so everything seems to be working as it was why did i do this let's increase the object count again okay okay i have an object limit i forgot about that let's increase the object limit to something very huge we actually ran out of memory we need to this point it is moving much more slower than it did before when we had only 10 objects or when we had only one object this point on the circle it moved very fast but now it is actually moving slower than it did before that is because we have too many objects now and as we keep increasing the number of objects so here i have a hundred thousand objects the point it is not moving at all it has totally stopped so it moved a bit here it is taking so much more longer to move now so the problem is that as we keep increasing the number of objects the code that runs behind the scene it also keeps increasing if we have a fast computer or if we have a slow computer this will actually affect how fast our game run in real time so that is not a great thing for us we don't want our object to like move slowly if someone doesn't have a fast computer or if someone has a faster computer than us we don't want him to be running the game much more faster and it will be much more fair to him because he has a better computer we want our game to be frame rate independent so for that we usually have a variable called delta delta is actually the time that passes between two updates so we take a variable and we store in it the time that uh, span between the last frame and this current frame so in real time it will tell us how much time it takes for us to update all of the objects so in game development usually we use that delta variable 
in all of our physics uh, manipulations so that our game it becomes frame rate independent so it will help us make our game consistent for all of the users so let's start with the code i'm going to remove all of these objects just one object is fine for now we are going to include the chrono library and here in public i'm going to create a variable called delta let's start by zero so before we update the objects we will store the time that is uh, right now uh, so this this function it will actually give us the time uh, right now and we are storing it in a variable called last time so the namespace we are using is chrono so this is the scope resolution operator uh, like how we have the namespace std and if we don't write using namespace std we can simply do this so chrono is the namespace like that inside the chrono namespace there is a namespace system underscore clock and inside the, that namespace there is a class called time underscore point and we are using that class inside the chrono namespace there is a namespace called high resolution clock and we are using that as well so now we are going to check the time after this update so we want delta to be the difference between now and the time we stored here and we are going to type us it into milliseconds and we want the count of the milliseconds so our delta will store the time that all of this took us we can use this variable uh, to know how fast our code is running and how fast we need to do things so right here if i multiply this angle by our delta value first of all you should notice a difference between our speed so this is now very slow so now we are telling it how much angle should be changed in each frame so we need to reduce this value a bit this looks fine now the positive of this is i can increase the number of objects to as high value as i prefer and look the code So by multiplying this by delta, uh, I actually skipped a few calculations uh, instead of doing calculations for each frame. So if I don't multiply delta here, I'm going to be doing my calculations at a pace that looks right to me. So it does the calculation at a equal pace. So if each frame ran for me at about 0.1 second for each frame, I will be doing this calculation without this value such that if 0.1 second has passed in my computer uh, i would be adding this value to the angle and after 0.1 second the angle should be incremented by this so for someone whose computer is slow and it takes him around one second to calculate all of this uh, he will be incrementing the same value so uh, this will be 10 times slower to him because he runs these calculations at a much slower pace but if i multiply this value by delta uh, this variable it will contain the number of milliseconds that took me so if i take about 0.1 second i take around 100 milliseconds and this value it will be multiplied by 100 so i'm going to run it at 0.25 each frame 0.25 each frame right if someone ran these calculations in one second uh, it will take him a thousand milliseconds he will be running these calculations at 2.5 he will increment the angle by 2.5 instead of 0.025 which i did this new value 2.5 this will be exactly how much you would have need to move in order to make these calculations appear the same these calculations appear time independent so by introducing delta we actually in introduce time independence also if you store microseconds instead of milliseconds this calculation will become much more accurate uh, when i tried using milliseconds the code actually ran a bit faster for our hundred thousand objects than it did for a single object but by using microseconds and reducing the angle value this becomes much more accurate I don't notice a speed difference at all but this comes at a cost of reducing uh, the value that you increment by this value might become very very small so you have to keep this in mind i am using a point on a circle here but this applies to anything that requires any movement at all so if i have a game where i have mario jumping and moving around i need to apply this delta variable there as well and if i have things like acceleration and velocity involved in anything i have to multiply this delta variable by by the velocity and by acceleration and by anything that requires some duration of time passing i need to multiply that by delta we can apply this to our snake game as well so yeah that is all awesome.